Welcome to Bolivia. What a wonderful place. The Santa Blanca cartel, headed by notorious product producer El Sueño, has taken over the entire government, while him and his over two dozen goobers each run it as an illicit substance-based plutocracy. This is because I lied and it isn't that. Recently, uh, whatever, close enough. CIA agent Ricky Sandoval got iced by this cartel, making it officially our problem. You play as the living, breathing mass casualty event nomad with his three European friends. Count Baron Kaiser Van Finling, Fingerling of an Magna, Juan Jose Maria Rigoberto Acascasas de Santo Domenico de los Cibetico, and lastly, Pierre Richard Pretage Logo Yo 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 Yo. Our job is to obliterate these 26 people at an absolute minimum. Together, this land is your oyster, clam, or perhaps some other form of mollusk, as we mechanically disassemble the entire state with grenade launch. And sorry, Grandma and Mom, but I will not bleep out any of the naughty words like I did with, per se, PS2 niche coin. The writing in this game is a JPEG of one of those skeletons on a motorcycle stretched roughly 50 hours of playtime, and depriving any one of it would be an act of mass censorship akin to the CCP in the 50s. I'm sure you know by now the internet is collectively at the end of the public edginess perception bell curve. The drip is tactical, the explosives are high, and the mission design is non-existent. So join me as we depart on our quest for justice, and there is so so much lithium, like you don't- Now, you may be saying, wow, Tonk, that sounds very pottery-pilled and faced, but why exactly are you reviewing Yubi Slop from 2017? And to that I say, we all know modern Yubi titles are summoned in a boardroom out of money, and the Rainbow Six Siege patch team is the gaming equivalent of a homeowner's association. Sure, you could boot up the latest 20 out of 10 Sekiro Demon Souls Ringborn that is explicitly designed half my lifespan, or your average quirky indie game where you micromanage 52 different gimmicks until the game dies in another month. Yeah, those games are good, but come on. Don't get the idea I hate them, because conventionally bad ones usually scratch an H they don't, and yeah, saying this is basically sacrilegious to the YouTube age of, oh, I only play the good video games. Unlike those Call of Duty bros. Those guys need to understand that video games are the only media where you can get away with that. If you swapped out the words from software title to Rick and Morty, you would be getting bullied. So, if you're neither in the camp of gaming is dead, keeps playing Halo Infinite, or multiple hour video essay on why Fallout New the Goose is the only product able to distract me from my severe estrogen pill thralls, and if you're a single dad star facing over Soyfield or someone who actually likes the goofy modern guy despite it not being enough of a Kino 16 bit allegory for abuse and depression, you'll see where I'm coming from here, because the game from the 2015 to 2018. Ubisoft era had the most amount of competency put into them while still having that reliable, not great, not terrible charm to them. I don't know, I just don't like hippies. So please, before your dopamine receptors fry and you become a jaded video jammer who plays Factorio between his dead-end jobs, which I will be very soon, in fact I'm surprised they haven't already fried yet, go and try them out. The Jakey video about 7 out of 10 games being just good comfort slop is my own personal me too. He got the game to have an 80% discount after it got pulled from PS Plus last year and you are going to let me cook? Good, let's rock, baby. The game begins on a helicopter, which, through some miracle, doesn't end up crashing. Playing as the digital nomad, we meet our CIA agent and 10th prestige max level white woman, get ready for this, Karen. Once we've established someone to sweep up after the consistent string of messes I will be making, we meet up with Pakatari, the leader of the Bolivian resistance fighter group that holds a potentially dangerous ideology that is fundamentally incompatible with American interventionism. I'm sure it's fine. Give him the stinger missiles. Whenever you finish rescuing their version of Karl Marx, you are dropped into the Sicario-flavored sandbox where you can handle anything in any order you want, including but not limited to the incorrect one. Here's how it works. The map is split into 21 segments, each one ruled by a guy in one of four divisions. First, receive a mentally ill briefing by Karen about the guy in charge of the region. And yes, I have been on 4chan. You're a pussy and you're off my Christmas list. Hint. She just went to rehab for saying something racist. Walk in, ruin that guy's day by doing the missions, then once he's exposed it could be kill or capture. Cause I guess I lied, you don't end up killing every Buchan. The shipping container. But instead of making a 9 hour video essay wherein I inspect every single 1 and 0, I'd much rather elaborate on the goofery of this game, starting with how the protagonist's voice actor is perfect. Almost no one else could depict the bottled rage this man would feel being controlled by me and my hijinks. Nomad's two emotions include and are limited to On Edge, Do I walk away from here with answers or your ears? The choice is yours. And Going Ballistic. I don't give a fuck about money, Carzita. I work for the US government. We spend billions of dollars on hand sanitizer alone. Pork barrels, 
Fuck face! Which, unless you play the female character, makes GR Breakpoint's Nomad being recast as Generic Army Shield Sky 413. All the more jarring. Yes, my custom character does not help things. Well, we'll ignore that. That's not the only reason for this change is I think that the guy, Joseph May, was playing a side character in the Division 2, which was in the same development window and prioritized for whatever reason. I don't know. Spread misinformation. Beyond that, do not, and I repeat, do not take near lethal damage in Ghost Recon Wildlands. Because I think he likes it. Now, what about the other fully customizable goobers? Halt is the mandatory funny guy. However, he wears a flannel and sometimes suggests that we take us off some sweet jumps, all right, in a helicopter. That's it, buddy. Fast acting HRT. Midas says and does just about absolutely nothing. I'm gonna be real with you. The research time for my videos consists of me in a cold, dark room for three weeks simply making things up. So if there was something funny I could write, I would. But he's basically just filler. So when Ubisoft offers me the $19 Sam Fisher missions in the next game to find out what happened to him, do you really think I paid for that? Especially because he can't buy it outright and need to spend at least $23 on Ghost Recon fun books. Hey, whatever. Lastly, Weaver is the nerd with the fully automatic high capacity sniper rifle or whatever the ATF is smoking, and he kind of looks like Kanye West. Oh, do not get it. And also in the Fallen Ghost expansion, Holt sounds like Weaver and Weaver sounds like Holt. Did anyone else make it down? Satcom feed is being jammed. Now that you know we're playing Hillbilly Final Fantasy 15, understand that your special forces team has the ability to teleport, be completely invisible to all enemies if you ask them nicely, and somehow never be able to kill anything while lasering it with a mounted Vulcan. But what you do get is the sync shot, which allows you to paint up to three targets to be sniped upon the first round you fire, allowing you to cheese the game. I'll be able to show you once I get line of sight and they're all dead! Did they got hit by a train. How did you get hit? The optimal way to use your AI companions is to utilize turn signals to get them to slam themselves into occupied buildings now and sort out who were the enemy combatants later. And you're going to need them because the difficulty of any given mission is at a constant yo-yo between break in here any way you want and plant the explosive way- No, no, use the bomb drone, it's too easy. I spent so long making this mission. Okay, nice. What I needed to do was sneak into the Cheyenne Mountain Space Force Station without a single particle of your being so much as touching the nose hairs of a guard. Then I needed to hack a terminal for four straight minutes under the max wanted level while also having every rocket in the state be helicopterly delivered to your exact position. Okay, cool, bye. Fun fact, a lot of the Unidad military bases have no other possible entrance besides the literal front gate in an open world stealth sandbox. The do the game in what order you want thing they have going on in tandem with how these skulls mean basically nothing makes what you should be doing in the order of difficulty a literal guessing game. Despite the level of thought put into any aspect of mission design being at a laughable zero, it doesn't phase me in the slightest because for every unreasonably difficult obstacle, there is an artistically effective solution. <laughs> The best example is the El Pulpo mission, where you need to let a fleeing cartel commander get to the airport after he ticked off just about everyone except you. The problem lies that he can't just get in your car and simply put his head down while the spec ops meth head floors it, sparing no sympathy for anyone he might flat. The only way to get him to this airport is to protect him in his Dodge Dakota nearing his 300,000th mile, and there are multiple heavily armed robots. Here's how you do this. In the northeastern corner of the Montague province, there is an LAV left unlocked outside an outpost with its keys on the dash. What you need to do is go on a road trip across three different regions and a few kilometers before leaving it on the hill, sneaking in, spawning him, hopping back in again, and maniacally cackling as your automated gunner dismantles everyone else on the road. Ejemplo numero dos, the mission in Media Luna where you need to get to the largest military base in the country mid-raid, then assassinate and identify El Comandante. It's a, it's a lovely heart. What I did was ascend past the range of the AA missiles, launch myself onto his house, place a load of buckshot in his stupid masked face, all before drop kicking fire exit open and scuttling off into the wilderness. Another job well done. Factions. There are approximately three types of people to run over in this game, minus the obvious one. Jesus, you just hit us a bit. Sicarios exist for the sole reason of giving you something to bully with little to no consequence. Dinky outposts. No armor, no anti-air, and their only tactical call out is to tell themselves to run at you and die. Unidad is a Bolivian National Armed Forces that, since this is a narco state, have agreements with the cartel as to not shoot each other, the stability of which being comparable to a celebrity marriage. On top of them having guns that aren't inspired by Fallout 4, if you end up triggering the alarm, it sets off a wanted level which will only keep building until you have gotten out of the area. Have you been preparing an Ocean's Eleven style heist within two miles of the nearest dirt path? Because you, my friend, have been spotted by a bulletproof minivan with four juggernauts who have been listening to Metallica, specifically Gamer from Fortnite Festival, for the past 16 sleepless hours, and now them and the 30 helicopter strike teams are out for gringo blood and you are going to die. Rebels are the non-hostile faction, besides civvies, but you know, those people won't stop staining my tires. Rebels aren't really good at anything that the Unidad and even Sicarios can't do better. But there are a lot of them. By doing the side jobs, you can unlock a couple abilities, including, and limited to, vehicle summoning for all your transportation necessities, granted it doesn't. 
<laughs> Excuse me. There's also the option to call in guys, not to be confused with call in more guys. Use them both for maximum guys. Good old artillery support. <laughs> and then there's my favorite, which is the recon button, because why would I be doing reconnaissance? That would be dumb. Quentin Tarantino's smash cut back to the top of missions. There's about four to seven per region, plus a few for the underbosses and heads and, uh, you know, this guy. But there's also a selection of post-game cameo missions, most of which are physically excruciating. Whenever Ubisoft remembers to give you checkpoints and you finish the silent spade missions by driving a dirty bomb into a quarry and forgetting to unbuckle Midas in the front, you are given the invisibility backpack, which is real handy. Upon the discovery of a destroyed convoy of neither Unidad or Rebel Handy, Work, we find the rogue Rainbow Six agent Cavera, who is the most sane Brazilian. For completing her stealth mission, you receive a pair of gloves that give you new, hilariously poorly animated takedowns. Once you shut down two cartel heads, you can just go kill El Sueño now, so if you go to do that, you find out that Karl Marx has been executed by the rebels who are now going after Sueño and shooting you in the process. After flying to Sueño's comically large personal mausoleum and slamming myself into it teeth first, we find that Pakatari has gotten ahead of us. <laughs> Unfortunately, Karen then gets a call from her superiors that Sueño has her flight logs and the only thing they can do is bring him to the U.S. with full immunity, but instead oh, Karen no. ignores orders and just shoots him out of either pure mauled or so he doesn't go back to South America and do this again, I don't know, I can't tell. However, if you do every mission, taking down every head, underboss, and Buchan, she doesn't shoot him. It's anticlimactic when they swap those around. It's explained he's going to be kept in a heavily surveilled penthouse before he gives up the info and is released, and either two things are going to happen to him. He's either going to go missing, and in unrelated news, the CIA is going to dump a suspiciously lumpy pile of laundry into the ocean, or he's going to go back and start up another drug cartel. But don't worry, Karen is going to solve that. With you. Again. This might have not been worth the WNBA play. In case you're wondering, Sueño is never mentioned again, and Karen shows up in the post-game DLCs and Breakpoint not doing a life sentence, so I suppose they did just have him commit suicide by shooting himself twice in the back. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's just about it. That was Glow's Recomp Wildcat, actually. I liked it so much, I bought the Fallen Ghost expansion, and it was not worth it. I have never played a game so open, yet so concise and clean, while also being a complete dumpster fire, and telling you about has been a service to <laughs> the greatest country ever, Tom Williams. If my review of a seven-year-old game with 50 concurrent players somehow does well, I will be making a Ghost Recon Breakpoint review, and you should be scared. Tune in next time, where I destroy another government, send hundreds of young Japanese men into the emergency room. Also, fine. Half-Life Alex.